Greetings, my minnow friends. Welcome back to Menopause University. I'm your teacher, Menopause Taylor, <laughs> and I teach you everything you need to know in order to succeed in managing your menopause your way. Here we are at video number 229, nearing the end of our unit on osteoporosis. You now know so much. You know that estrogen loss causes osteoporosis and that there are no symptoms until you fracture your spine, hip, or wrist. And you know that a DEXA scan can tell you that if you've lost bones and that there is a smorgasbord of options for managing your menopause to avoid or treat osteoporosis. If any of what I just said is the least bit foggy for you, it's because you haven't watched my videos in order. Otherwise, you should be rolling your eyes saying, this is so basic. <laughs> so last week, I discussed the fact that all options for managing osteoporosis do not provide the same benefits or accomplish the same things. And I used the T-score scale to show you where they fall in terms of prevention, intervention, or fixing. Here's what you've seen a number of times. In addition to utilizing the T-score, I likened prevention, intervention, and fixing to lanes. And I explained that you have to use options that are in the same lane as your T-score. You can't expect an option that is only suitable for prevention to accomplish the task of fixing. And I showed you this chart. And way back in the very first video on osteoporosis, which was video 196, I addressed the issue of bone quantity versus bone quality. But that was when you knew nothing about these options for managing osteoporosis. All you knew then was that your bone quantity was determined by and dependent on estrogen, and that your bone quality was determined by and dependent on calcium. You might recall seeing this way back then. It's a simple four square chart the pink box is strong, normal bone. It represents high quantity of bone and a high quality of bone. The orange box is weak, normal bone. It represents a high quantity of bone that is of poor quality. The green box is strong osteoporotic bone. It represents a low quantity of high quality bone. And the yellow box is weak osteoporotic bone. It represents a low quantity of bone that is also of poor quality. Well, now it's time to combine all this. I always like to come full circle. So, instead of assessing the management options in terms of where they fall on the T-score scale, or in terms of their ability to function in the realm of prevention, intervention, or fixing. Today, we're going to assess them in terms of their ability to contribute to the quantity of your bone or the quality of your bone. This will further reiterate the inadequacy of the current management recommendations for bone loss. Now, you will not find this as a standalone section in my book, but you will find this material on bone quantity versus bone quality in chapter 29, which is the chapter on osteoporosis. So watching this video is critical in terms of avoiding assumptions that you might have drawn from what you've learned thus far. By comparing these assessments based on different targets, you're going to discover what's most important. So using all the charts I've shown you here today, let's create another chart. 
We'll use the skeleton of our quantity and quality chart and fill it in with the management options pertinent to each cell. Take a look at the skeleton of the quantity, quantity versus quality chart. Your job is to decide where each management option belongs. For example, if the management option is only for prevention of osteoporosis, meaning that all it can do is keep your normal strong bone, normal and strong, then it belongs in the pink box. The pink box is where you already have high bone quantity and high bone quality. So your goal in that case would be to just keep your bone that way. If a management option serves the purpose of contributing only to bone quality, it belongs in the orange and yellow boxes with low bone quality. Notice that Depending on the box it is in, the management option may be functioning for prevention or intervention or fixing. But you're placing each item in the box that designates its purpose with regard to improving quantity or quality. Because although you may need to focus most heavily on just bone quantity or bone quality, what you really want is to have both. And that means you will probably be using more than one management option, no matter what your situation. I don't want you to get the impression that you are only supposed to choose one option. The goal is to know your options and use whichever ones are most suitable for you. So if a management option serves the purpose of contributing to bone quantity, it belongs in the green and yellow boxes, both of which have low bone quantity. And if a management option serves the purpose of contributing to both bone quantity and both bone quality, it belongs in all the boxes. So let's see what evolves. I will address the management options in the same order we address them in this unit on osteoporosis. So we'll start with lifestyle options. What are the lifestyle options for preventing osteoporosis? They include refraining from smoking, and getting adequate sun exposure and fall proofing your home. <gasps> Refraining from smoking and getting sun exposure are strictly for prevention, but they do contribute to bone quantity. Let's put those on our chart. Fall proofing your home is for intervention once you've already have bone loss and it contributes to preventing a fall that fractures. So with regard to quantity and quality, it really doesn't contribute to either. So we're gonna leave it off the chart. Next, we have exercise. Does it contribute to the quantity of your bone? Yes. Does it contribute to the quality of your bone? Yes. But, and this is a big but, it only does so in the realm of prevention. So it's important no matter what your situation, but it cannot function all by itself if you already have bone loss. Still, it goes in all the boxes. What about diet? You've learned that Unlike the case with your diet for preventing a heart attack, diet has a very limited role in the realm of osteoporosis. It's only for prevention. It's important for both quantity and quality of your bones, but it can only lower your risk for osteoporosis. It cannot fix osteoporosis. Nevertheless, it belongs in all the boxes. Now we come to vitamins and minerals. If you'll recall, I gave you four separate videos on vitamins and minerals. In video 217, you learned that the vitamins and trace minerals that contribute to bone health function in the realm of both quantity and quality. So they belong in all the boxes. And in video 218, 
you learn that calcium serves the purpose of improving bone quality only. Of course, you need to take it no matter what the status of your bone, but for purposes of our quantity versus quality chart, we'll place it in the boxes with low quality. And in video 219, you learn that vitamin D contributes to both bone quantity and bone quality. So we'll put it in all the boxes. See how this works? <laughs> I'm skipping herbal options because you learned in video 221 that they are not capable of functioning in any capacity with regard to osteoporosis. So while herbs are good for some things, they are not beneficial for your osteoporosis management. So next we have hormonal options. Estrogen is all about quantity. You've learned that it benefits bone no matter what your situation, but while it is beneficial no matter what, in keeping with our quantity versus quality distinction, we'll place it in only the boxes with low quantity of bone. Now for testosterone. Well, testosterone serves the same purpose for men that estrogen serves for women, bone quantity. So it goes in the same boxes as estrogen. The big difference in women taking testosterone instead of estrogen is that testosterone causes all sorts of masculinizing side effects. And the dosage of testosterone that you need to treat or prevent osteoporosis would cause severe masculinization. So that's why you designate it for purposes of prevention and intervention rather than fixing but for purposes of our quantity versus quality distinction, it belongs with estrogen in the boxes with low bone quantity. Okay, do you remember a hormonal medication by the name of Tibolone? I presented it alongside the other hormonal medication options in video 222. It prevents bone loss, which contributes to quantity. But women rarely use it for prevention. It's mostly used for intervention. Nonetheless, it belongs in the two boxes with low bone quantity. The other two hormonal medications I presented in video 222 were teriparatide and calcitonin. You learn that both of these build bone which means they increase the quantity of your bone. So they go in the boxes with low bone quantity too. And finally, you learn about all the non-hormonal medications for preventing and treating osteoporosis in video 224. There was a huge smorgasbord of these alone, and they include a lot of serms and one antibody. I'll designate them as a group by calling them the non-hormonal medication options, and they fall into the realm of treatment. They replace lost bone. So that constitutes bone quantity, and we'll put them in the boxes with low bone quantity. So what you see is that there are many more options for improving your bone quantity than there are for improving your bone quality. The big limitation exists with regard to whether any given option falls within the realm of prevention, intervention, or fixing. So many women fail to meet their goals because they use an option for the right purpose, but at a time when its effectiveness for that purpose has long gone. For instance, they may utilize exercise to address bone quantity when they've already lost too much bone for exercise to have any beneficial effect on bone quantity. It's not that exercise isn't good for preventing bone loss, it's just that the time when it can make a significant difference has long gone. So timing is everything. What this means is that in a contest between quantity and quality on one side and prevention, intervention, or fixing on the other side, 
Staying in the proper lane for prevention, intervention, or fixing is much more important. So if you compare the chart we made last week with the chart we made today, you see that the management options were more confined last week than they appeared on our chart today. They were confined to those three lanes, prevention, intervention, and fixing. Here's today's chart again. And here's last week's chart. Do you see why I present things to you from different perspectives? It would be so easy for you to look at the quantity versus quality chart and assume that all the options in each box are equivalent in terms of what they can accomplish. They aren't. So be sure to focus on the limitations of each option and many limitations depend on timing. This is an overriding theme of this entire menopause education, knowing the limitations and timing constraints of each option is critical. It can save you a whole lot of misery, surprises, and in the case of osteoporosis, fractures. You can find links to both of today's charts right under the screen you're viewing, or you can go to menopausetaylor.me where you'll find them on the YouTube video tutorial page. Okay, that's it for today. Next week, we will have the last video in the osteoporosis unit. It will be an all-encompassing look at deficiencies in the care of women with deficient bone. If you have a hint of bone loss, please, please schedule a consultation with me. I am very dogmatic about making sure you prevent bone loss and fractures rather than treating them after they occur. But I'm the only one in that regard. If you adhere to the guidelines and standards of the medical practice, no one will care until you're broken and need fixing. So consult with me. You can schedule a consultation at menopausetaylor.me. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I will see you in a week. Bye.